However, the issue went beyond preventing. The ambush he needed to uncover the mastermind behind it, he couldn't find the perpetrator behind an incident in his past life, but this time around he promised that he'll def definitely uncover and punish them the siblings. Gathered to discuss the situation Tyron voiced his suspicion feeling that something was off about the support they were receiving and the timing of it, he mentioned that it was particularly strange that the support troops were coming from Balsar a faction that viewed their family as enemies the fact that Balsar was providing royal support which had never happened before raised even. More suspicion Tyron was certain that he wasn't the only one suspecting them and believed that Balsar might be up to. Something Chiral who was listening understood that Tyron's suspicions were valid he knew that it was happening. Because the Emperor Titan S.H. Dane had not yet named the successor the Emperor had three sons Ruan Oliver and Croman. The frail third Prince Croman was not actively involved in the struggle for the throne leaving the fight primarily. Between the first Prince Ruen and the second Prince Oliver the balance of power shifted when their father Cruel, who was the commander of the Blue Knights supported Oliver instead of Ruen, this naturally led to tensions with Balsar who supported Ruen, the first Prince Tyron explained that Balsar represented the first prince's faction and they were now sending support troops from the border, he pointed out that the timing was suspicious especially when their father was not around Mart agreed that Tyron had a point, but he assured them that the knights led by their father would return to the north for the extermination and Balsar wouldn't dare challenge the blue knights if they were. In their right minds Tyre and frowned in anger at the response Mart added that above all it was an edict from the royal family so they should refrain from having disrespectful conversations however in his mind Cairo acknowledged. The burdensome situation Tyron must be facing at his age, he silently encouraged Iron to keep doubting as his suspicion. Would make him a better strategist Chiral wanted Tyron to develop into a brilliant strategist who could assist. Him Tyron declared that they should proceed as planned and stated that he would participate in the extermination. This surprised Martin Chiral Tyron told Mark that they didn't need to handle it personally Chiral who was taken aback by. Tyron's decision realized that things were indeed changing Elliot and Randall offered to accompany Tyron, but he told them that if he needed an escort he would take Randall and Chiral with him, this shocked Chiral and the two brothers. Were both angry and speechless however they agreed and Chiral advised them to start preparing as well before leaving. The room leaving his brothers behind as he walked he marveled at Tyron's impressive decision-making skills he recognized that Tyron had chosen the support troops that would naturally arouse suspicion in this situation they couldn't send Mart who was the first in line to succeed Tyron had played two cards Randall who was trustworthy and himself the expendable one with little regard for life he understood that as the newcomer and outcast in the mansion Tyron wanted to observe him up close and find out the truth for himself Tyron intended to find the answers on the battlefield, and he thought it was an excellent plan in his previous life Tyron hadn't participated in the extermination so he knew that things were changing. He confidently believed that even the disaster that began with Randall's death and the future itself would change, he swung his sword back and threw it hard toward the four rest then. Immediately ran to catch it cutting through the trees in his path, he balanced himself to stop and the trees. He had exploded into pieces in the air, he thought that he had no intention of just watching as events unfolded with his own hands he would directly change the future five days later the Knights of Balsar greeted the members of the Magiver family the leader of the Knights of Balsar introduced himself as Arden and informed them that in accordance with the royal order 500 Balsarian troops had arrived to aid the Magiva family Mart thanked Arden acknowledging the difficulty of defending the border and expressing gratitude on behalf of their father crew well Arden bowed and accepted the gratitude but privately thought that Mart didn't seem particularly threatening Arden also knew that the real danger came from the four children brought by Eula who were meant to compensate for Mart's shortcomings as 
the eldest he observed Chiral who was wearing a mask wondering who he was according to the reports there were only four adopted children so Arden questioned Mart about the masked individual Mart walked closer to Chiral explaining that Cairo was the sixth member who had recently joined the family ward requested that Arden understand Cairo's mask citing certain circumstances Arden responded that they now had to refer to them as the six lords not five he found the masked man to be quite odd and wondered if Count Cruel had no pride accepting such inexperienced individuals as his adopted children afterward Arden informed the brothers that the Balsar troops would finish preparing for the departure and then walked away in his mind, he furiously labeled Arden as a filthy spy of the Lorian Empire. Recognizing that they hadn't seen each other for a while, he knows that even if the Balsar family supports the first prince they wouldn't be so blind as to target their family and they wouldn't dare to move recklessly not with the Shadow of his father's night squad. This move signifies that the Balsar family has a certain level of assurance which means someone outside the empire is pulling the strings. Bart looks at him and asks what is on his mind. He replies that it is nothing much. Mart tells him that he understands why he is wearing a mask and why they still can't reveal his true identity. He tells him that it doesn't bother bother him and he thinks it's actually a blessing in disguise. Also, he believes there is much he can do behind that mask, and above all it conceals his existence Arden shouts to his troops to move out, and they begin walking Mark calls Chiral behind Arden's back and tells him to keep an eye on Arden to which he nods in agreement, thinking that the sea he longed for his coming later, they are all on horseback. Climbing up the forest he notices something and realizes that gradually the forest path is getting narrower which is definitely where they were ambushed before so he thinks the first thing to do is suddenly someone shouts to them that goblins have been spotted up ahead and there are more than a hundred of them Arden shouts to everyone to prepare for battle but he knows that he needs to watch every move they make leaving no stone unturned because he won't let things go in Arden's way this time the goblins jump toward and attack the troops who are panicking while trying to block them Arden jumps toward the goblins and slices them to death after killing the goblins in front, he tells his troops not to be startled by a petty ambush like this and orders them to maintain formation and switch to the offensive, then he orders them to attack, to which the troops follow and stab the goblins in front of them on the other hand, he is riding his horse and swings. His sword back slicing the goblins in his way, he realizes that there aren't enough goblins there and that number couldn't possibly result in the kind of devastation they faced in the past Randall dying to a mere pack of goblins. Like this is just impossible moreover the initial shock of the ambush has faded and the situation is leaning in. Their favors so he knows that there is definitely something else suddenly he hears people shouting in pain and when he looks ahead he sees some troops being thrown in the air and others shouting that a massive attack is coming the Troops inform them that it's coming from behind causing the brothers to look back and see angry big teeth, a large firm. Monster's hand and huge goblins shouting at them in anger the troops are stunned and he is surprised to realize that it is the goblin chief. The goblin chief is not just strong itself but it usually operates with an army of around three zizen. Goblins making it a significant threat, he now understands how Randall about kill and at least his first suspicion. Has somewhat been answered Tyron shouts for everyone to fall back and not confront the goblin chief directly but Arden turns back causing Tyron to ask what he is doing while Chiral wonders about Arden he rides his horse toward. The chief goblin ordering everyone to maintain formation and retreat Chiral wonders if Arden really is just a spy. From the Empire with no connection to the incident, but he thinks it's ridiculous Arden's presence there can't. Be as simple as a coincidence so he plans to see how long Arden can keep up the act Arden furiously swings his weapon at the goblins in his way, then he dismounts his horse while ordering his troops to clear the way and not to chase. Recklessly the rest of them follow him leaving the troops shocked Arden activates his sword releasing magic. 
power and sharpening, it causing the goblins to shout in pain, he points it toward the chief goblin and throws it, telling it to die, but the chief just swings his weapon deflecting it away before it hits him, he jumps and catches his spear in the air, then he launches himself to stab the chief goblin in the process Chiral notices Arden's hand that holds the spear and is shocked to figure out something Arden stabs the goblin furiously, but as he expected Arden has a trick up his sleeve just a moment ago very cunningly, he deliberately grazed it with his attack Arden pulls his spear out and the goblin furiously attacks him with its weapon, but he blocks it however the force of the attack throws him to the ground causing the troops to worry the chief goblin turns around grabs one of the goblins and walks away Arden, orders his troops to go after them and not spare anyone as he watches Arden, he understands why no one noticed it with. The excuse of chasing the goblin chief Balsar's soldiers are driven from the battlefield when only the goblin. Soldiers are left, they will execute an attack when everyone has let their guard down, he praises Arden for his nice. Strategy he has already understood all of Arden's schemes, and after Arden attempted to fool him with his poor. Acting suddenly Tyron calls him and suggests that they should leave all the others to Arden and focus on guarding. The area however he tells Tyron that he's not going after the monsters, but rather after Arden later they are near. The top of the forest and Arden stops and looks around he thinks it will do and tells the soldiers that he will go. After the goblin chief while they split into two groups to take care of the remaining goblins one of the higher. Ranking soldiers asks him if he's going alone and Arden replies that if there is a goblin chief it means there are also. Masterminds or sorcerer taking care of everything they need to completely clear out all the remaining goblins he then asks the man if by any chance he doesn't believe that he can finish them all by himself, the man apologizes and says he didn't mean it that way Arden leaves saying that the rest are going to be just a little bothersome for him thinking that it's okay whether it's a little or a lot later he stops somewhere in the forest and says that it should be easy looking at the chief goblin in pain and the other goblins he dismounts his horse and tells the goblins to come to him saying that he'll beat them all by himself then a man welcomes him and tells him that they have been waiting for him he tells the man that the little ones from the magiver family turned out to be good at fighting and asks the man to tell the chief goblin to go away the man tells the chief goblin and that it can leave suddenly someone says so it was the tangent spot making arden look Back in shock asking who it was Carol tells Arden that he has been fighting too hard and that he should at least try to give them the right context details as the route was problematic as well he then says wooden cloud surprising Arden and causing him to ask how Chiral knew about it Arden points his spear at him and asks if he is of the same kind or an. Accomplice Cairo replies that it's a shame, and he really doesn't know him, he tells Arden that he is there to check. And confirm because he also hasn't received any reports about him, he doesn't care if Arden believes him or not, but he also has business with the Magiver family, he asks Arden if he's following what he is saying and called. Arden's full name Arden realizes that Cairo knows his full name and wonders if he is really from the cloud, then he explains that the man is controlling the goblin chief, meaning that he must have spent a lot from the root, and he bets. The sorcerer are hiding around that area but Chiral apologizes and tells that he was being too much and should have been. More careful as clouds should protect their own secrets, he hopes that Arden understand and since it's a special case. To which Arden nods in agreement Chiral tells him that he has responsibilities to complete as well and the branches should just do what they were asked while the stems are responsible for reporting to the roots. Hearing this Arden is sure that Chiral is one of them. He tells Chiral that on the opposite side there are goblins hiding and waiting to execute an ambush when he gives the signal they will move to the Majira soldier's location to attack them immediately Arden also tells him that. The charm from the root will help them control the goblins and send signals and the charm will take care of it all he walks closer to the man who's holding the charm saying that it's a relief to hear that the charm will handle all of 
those tasks by itself, then unexpectedly he pulls his sword out, but before Arden can stop him he cut the sorcerer hands in instant and look back at Arden Arden angrily asks him what the heck he just did Chiral simply tells him that they now have more time and asks if they should take care of them one by one Arden asks him where he came from but Chiral walks closer to him saying that he has a fantastic opponent there he is glad that finally after all that time he has an opponent with whom he can fully radiate his charm Barton thought he had never seen a mana blade like it before, and wondered what its attributes could be. He also knew that it was an unknown entity with both its attributes and identity shrouded in mystery. He pondered where it had come from and whether it was associated with the Tyros Union or the Istria Confederation Chiral jumped towards Arden intending to attack, but Arden blocked the strike using his spear. Arden surprising him with his speed Arden watched in shock as Cairo leaped towards the chief goblin the chief. Goblin shouted brandishing its weapons to block the attack, but Arden swiftly cut the goblin in half with his monoblade causing it to fall to the ground in two pieces, witnessing Cairo take down the chief goblin in a single. Strike Arden was shocked and wondered what kind of monster Cairo was in where he had come from Cairo lunged towards. Him ready to attack again, but Arden activated his spear with fury causing Cairo to hesitate however Cairo knew he had the upper hand he effortlessly dodged Arden's magical powers while closing in on him surprising Arden even. More Arden increased his power to strike but Cairo managed to evade the blow and in return cut off one of Arden's arms. Initially stunned Arden eventually knelt on the ground shouting in pain Cairo looked at his sword acknowledging that his swordsmanship could handle that level of power, but he also recognized his shortcomings in explosive magic. Proficiency approaching the injured Arden Cairo ordered him to answer his questions he inquired about what art and New regarding Root Arden retorted questioning whether someone like him would willingly provide answers Cairo responded that he didn't expect an answer from him and that Arden was merely a perfect example this response. Left Arden both surprised and confused without hesitation Chiral severed Arden's head Arden's lifeless body fell to the ground while Cairo remarked that the sorcerer nearby seemed unaccustomed to pain the sorcerer without hands was. Shocked at the sight of Arden's decapitated head and angrily ordered the goblins to attack Chiral however the Goblins threw down their web weapons and fled the sorcerer turned back upon hearing Chiral's commanding voice and was told to listen carefully Tyrol informed him that he would only ask once later Chiral descended to where his brothers were with the sorcerer tied up behind him Tyron dismounted his horse and anxiously called out Chiral's name. Asking what had happened Tyron also inquired about the fate of the goblin chief and the whereabouts of Lord Arden. Cairo replied that they were ambushed by goblins and sadly Arden had been killed by the goblin chief he then showed them. A bloody object he was holding leaving Tyre and confused prompting him to ask what it was Cairo threw the sorcerer to the ground and explained that it was not a simple ambush but an assault to subjugate the Magiver family he revealed that the man in front of them was the sorcerer controlling the goblins and upon verifying his identity they Discovered he was from the Lurian Empire, he informed them that with their command structure and chaos the goblins were. Likely confused it was crucial for them to make a decision as leaving the goblins unchecked would cause immense damage to nearby villages Tyran and Randall were left shocked and speechless, this upon hearing his words Cairo called. Upon the lieutenant of the Balsar family who responded promptly he informed the lieutenant that their commander was dead and asked if he would assume command the lieutenant was taken aback and confused Cairo assured them that if they decided to retreat they wouldn't be blamed considering both the goblins and balsars were in chaos after losing their commanders the lieutenant bowed realizing that if they retreated the count would not let it go unpunished he replied that the balsar family would assist in the subjugation mounting his horse again Cairo expressed his 
satisfaction and remarked that it was a relief. He then informed Tyron that he was handing over command to him as the longer the subjugation was delayed the more the civilians would suffer however Tyron insisted that Chiral was the one who should lead as he was the commander Tyrol nodded in agreement acknowledging Tyron's point he addressed his soldiers urging them to move forward knowing they had a mission three years ahead and needed to reach a higher position even if only by a small margin he understood that if he couldn't attain a position where he could assert his will and dominance he wouldn't be able to achieve anything he realized the importance of getting to the capital as soon as possible as the future was already beginning to change later they encountered the monsters and chiral believed that remnants without a commander were nothing he launched an attack on the goblins ordering the soldiers to charge at full force leaving Tyre and wondering how on earth he was supposed to explain this Tyre knew that Cairo couldn't even use magic so he wondered how he could fight with such prowess Randall told him that Cairo was more than they had initially thought and that they were wrong in their assumptions because Cairo was a monster Randall also mentioned that once Cairo reached adulthood even the word monster wouldn't be enough to describe him meanwhile in the palace a man informed cruel that Cairo had done an excellent job cruel replied that he had heard about it and that they had even captured the spy the man proudly stated that if Cairo hadn't been there not only the young masters but the territory itself would have been in danger he mentioned that since the news had reached their majesty it was likely that the spy would be sent to the imperial palace soon cruel remained silent and asked the man if he thought their majesty he would invite Cairo to the palace crew all knew that their majesty was already old and wouldn't have any interest in a twelve year old kid however the problem lay with the princes he understood that they would carefully consider Cairo and didn't know if they would keep him on their side or get rid of him even if their majesty was the one to call for Cairo they wouldn't be able to let him go easily meanwhile in the forest Cairo knew that now that he had been to the capital of the empire everything was getting complicated because he was an outsider however he was all right with that as he had come up with another plan he approached a carriage inside he called for the sorcerer named Baker and told him to wake up he instructed Baker to listen carefully from now on and to tell him everything he knew Cairo assured Baker that it would make things a little easier for him Baker complied and told him everything Cairo asked if it was the truth and Baker replied that. He had told him everything he knew begging him to spare his life Cairo informed Baker that he would be sent to. The capital and tortured their shocking Baker Hyrule explained that the pain of having both arms cut off would be. Nothing compared to the torture that awaited him he mentioned that the supervisor of the torture chamber enjoyed cutting people's flesh and that even if Baker confessed everything the torture wouldn't stop Baker would go through hell for several months before. Meeting a miserable death, then Cairo handed Baker something and asked if he wished for leniency Baker recognized of. His dwarf ginseng but Cairo explained that he was giving Baker a chance to die by his own hand as it was the last thing. He could do the next day they returned to their place and the people were celebrating their victory wishing them a. Long life Tyran told Cairo to be more confident because he was also the son of Magiver, and it was only natural now that he had made the greatest contribution Randall told him that he should be at the front line but Cairo responded that it didn't matter to him causing Randall to call him cheeky Cairo looked at his brother realizing that they had become much softer since they were together unlike in the past he wondered how Randall's survival would affect the Future Tyran mentioned to Randall that he should prepare himself as now that the incident would be known in the capital their majesty might summon them Randall pondered why he was going to the palace when Cairo was the one who had made the greatest contribution to their expedition but he soon understood that Cairo was an outsider and couldn't go. To the palace he thought that if Cairo couldn't go then he had no right to go either compared to what Cairo had done. His own achievements seemed insignificant, he wondered about the source of Cairo's confidence knowing that Cairo must understand better than anyone else that being an outsider had its limitations he questioned how Cairo 
could be so confident Randall also pondered over the fact that if Cairo could overcome those limitations then he should be able to as well he promised himself that someday he would be like Cairo later he knocked on his father. Crewell's door Crewell welcomed him and praised him for his great job however he responded that he was just lucky crew. Will acknowledged that getting lucky was also a skill and mentioned that not only had he caught the spy but he had also saved his brother's lives he informed him that the news about him had already spread through the palace and that a about his origin so he was considering sending Tyron and Randall in instead, he replied that it was fine with him cruel, thanked him for his understanding and told him that in exchange he could ask for anything he wanted he requested a passing permit surprising crew well cruel asked if it meant that he wanted to leave the mansion and he confirmed it. Crew well inquired if he didn't like living there or if he was disappointed he clarified that it was not the case and explained that he simply wanted to see a wider world, he understood that gaining freedom was crucial for him to be involved in future events. Cruel informed him that if that was what he wanted he could have it and showed him a stamp. He explained that it was a stamp given only to those who carried a mission from him allowing them to pass. All the Empire's checkpoints however his identity could not be known crew will apologize for not being able to give him credit for his hard work, but he expressed that it should be more than enough for him suddenly someone shouted. To Cruel informing him about a big problem, the man told him that the prisoner had killed himself leaving. Cruel shocked he asked the man to repeat what he had said 